to show the juvenile nonfiction. Go ahead and work on it, and when you get done, grab Jasmine or Carrington. Like, you got it, Miss Sierra. Just remember to take your time. There can be several numbers in the call number overall in the nonfiction section, so be careful. Yeah, I will. All right, I'll leave you to it. Ha! Take my time. This will be a piece of cake. Hmm. Uh, wait. Six, four, nine, point, wait, two, three, four, six, six point, uh, three, uh, okay. Maybe I should try an overlay on this. Mr. Carrington? No. Needs to be recolored. Mr. Carrington? Huh? Oh! Hey, Tiffany. Hey. Um, so I'm done shelving the juvenile nonfiction. Oh. You don't sound too happy about that. Um, it was like a lot harder than I thought it would be. Oh. Well, let's go see how you did. Hmm. There's a few that are misshelved. A few? Well, more than a few. Most of them. Oh, I knew it! Oh, I'm so dumb. Whoa, hey, Tiffany, you're not dumb. Is this your first time shelving nonfiction? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. You just have to train your brain. Train my brain? Yeah. Hold on. Let me grab you a book about it. Your brain is like a muscle. If you try challenging your brain with hard problems, you're exercising it so it can get stronger. That makes you stronger and smarter. Remember, it's okay to make mistakes. The important thing is that you don't give up. If you keep trying again and again, your brain will grow. Let's go on a brain tour. Our brain is the most important and complex organ we have. Without our brains, we wouldn't be the people we are. Let's take a tour of our amazing brain. The cerebrum. This is the biggest part of your brain. The cerebrum helps us think and solve problems. There are two halves, a right side and a left side. The right side of the cerebrum controls the left side of the body and the left side of the cerebrum controls the right side of the body. Isn't that funny? The cerebellum. It's a lot smaller than the cerebrum. It helps you move, like keeping you balanced on a bike and standing. The amygdala. This part of your brain controls your emotions and feelings. Without it, you wouldn't be able to feel the difference between winning a game or failing a test. The brain stem. Your brain does work without you even noticing. The brain stem helps you breathe and keeps your heart pumping. Let's do an activity. Try to match up the part of the brain to the action it controls. Which part of your brain controls your feelings? The cerebrum, amygdala, cerebellum, or brainstem? The amygdala. 
Which part of your brain helps you think and solve problems? The cerebrum, amygdala, cerebellum, or brainstem? The cerebrum. This part of your brain does things without you noticing, like breathing or keeping your heart beating. The cerebrum, amygdala, cerebellum, or brainstem. The brainstem. This part of your brain helps you move. The cerebrum, amygdala, cerebellum, or brainstem. The cerebellum. Eighty-six billion neurons. Our brains have tiny little cells called neurons. These little things connect our whole brain. Our brains have eighty-six billion neurons. Can you imagine what eighty-six billion looks like? That's about two million nine hundred sixty-five thousand five hundred seventeen pounds of rice. If you were traveling through space and wanted to go 86 billion miles from Earth, you would go past Pluto. Your brain is powerful. The human brain is the most complex structure in the universe. It's more complex than the biggest, fastest machines ever built. With that kind of power, we can do anything we put our 86 billion neurons to do. What is good for my brain? Remember when we said that you can exercise your brain? Here are some ways to keep your brain healthy and happy. Eat healthy foods like fruits and veggies. You may not like fruit and or vegetables, but your brain sure does. These foods have lots of vitamins and minerals that your brain loves. Things like berries, broccoli, eggs, and nuts all help to keep your brain healthy. Practice hard tasks. Practicing things that make you think help your brain get stronger. Doing things like crossword puzzles, word searches, or math problems can give your brain the workout it needs. Drink plenty of water. Your brain is three-fourths made of water, so keeping your body hydrated is important. Staying active. Your brain loves to move around and spend time outside. Wear a helmet when riding a bike, a skateboard, and playing sports. Helmets will protect your brain. What's bad for your brain? There are also things that are not so good for your brain. Things like too much screen time, drugs and alcohol, sugary drinks like sodas, and not getting enough sleep can really hurt your brain.
Your brain is a muscle. The more you challenge your brain, the stronger it gets. When you practice something, you develop your skills and get better and better over time. Your brain is a computer just waiting for information. And those 86 billion neurons in your brain are just waiting for you to practice and work hard so they can form connections and make your brain stronger. Grab a sheet of paper and something to write with. Think about the following questions. You can pause the video to write out your answer. What do you want to be an expert of? Why do you want to be an expert of it? Imagine yourself in the future as this expert. What will you look like? You can draw a picture if you want. What could you practice now that will help you become this expert? Remember, Skills are not abilities we're born with. With practice and hard work, we can train our brains to get better and better at anything we want. Repetition is a great way to learn things. The more you repeat something you want to learn, the more you understand it. So get practicing. So you see, Tiffany, all you have to do is keep practicing and your brain will eventually get it. Huh. I guess. Well, it's kind of like video editing. See, I, I edit the videos for all the virtual programs for Nixon, and I didn't start out knowing everything. You didn't? No. Truth be told, it was mostly trial and error. But every time I edit a video, I get better and better. Huh. Yeah, I guess you're right. If I keep practicing shelving nonfiction, then like, I'll get better at it. And soon I'll be shelving nonfiction in no time. 